So, uh, hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on the time of day when you view this video. Uh, this is uh, the uh, class uh, for uh, Thursday, February the 10th, 2022. Uh, the notes are already available uh, to you uh, online, and I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. Uh, again, this is a uh, set of notes that would be well worth you working through because they contain lots of examples and uh, show you uh, lots of things uh, that you need to know. So I'll share my screen. And uh, what you're seeing here is I've gone uh, to the set of notes uh, labeled uh, 6B, uh, which uh, is the complete uh, set of notes for uh, linear time invariant systems. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to start with is a simple uh, convolution example. Uh, and so it's a calculation uh, showing a convolution of a signal function X uh, with a unit step function. Uh, we use the definition of the uh, of the uh, step function and uh, the convolution integral, uh, and uh, work out uh, the uh, details. Uh, and uh, you know, just using uh, the uh, uh, the basic things uh, that we already uh, know. In other words, how to integrate, uh, and uh, the uh, what we ha have uh, done uh, then uh, is uh, we have. Uh, calculated uh, the uh, basic uh, pieces. I do uh, pay particular note uh, to the fact that we're using uh, a step function uh, where tor is the variable uh, and uh, it's in our uh, uh, in our uh, uh, T0 position for, for how we defined uh, the, uh, the unit step function. So uh, we're actually looking at a time reversed uh, step function uh, here, uh, but uh, we've talked about that before. And in fact, I'll talk about it uh, some more uh, before uh, we uh, finish. Uh, so that anyway is the, uh, the first example. Uh, then uh, I have a second example, uh, and uh, the second example is merely an example uh, where we did the same thing, except this time I used uh, the, uh, uh, the time shifted uh, unit uh, step function. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we've, uh, we've gone through and, and made the calculation. So, uh, now we get into uh, what uh, is really uh, some new stuff. I'm going to look at some practical examples of convolution integrals. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, what uh, we are making use of uh, here is uh, the impulse response, uh, uh, the impulse response function. Uh, and clearly that's something we're going to have to figure out how to evaluate. But what we, what we have written here is the input is the convolution of uh, a uh, of, of an input signal x and uh, a an impulse response uh, function h uh, we've used the prescription uh, to uh, write it uh, in terms of uh, the time reverse de uh, delayed uh, impulse response function uh, but anyway uh, what we have to do is uh, to evaluate this for a particular value of t and then look, look at the uh, values for all t uh, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take uh, the input signal uh, uh, to be a step function uh, and uh, the response uh, to be a step function as well. Uh, so we, uh, we can uh, then rewrite uh, the convolution integral uh, that I, I be, uh, began with. And in all of these convolution integrals, the challenge is setting the limits on t and tau. Uh, and a, a good approach is always going to be uh, to set the limits on uh, the dummy variable tau in terms of our original uh, time uh, variable. Uh, and uh, then uh, what we what we can do is use uh, the that information to also set limits on t. So uh, in uh, this uh, case, uh, the uh, unit step function is going to start 
uh, at zero. Uh, so this makes the lower uh, limit uh, t uh, and uh, the uh, unit uh, step function uh, is, is uh, going uh, to be zero for times, uh, oh, sorry, values of tor larger than t. So that sets the upper limit on uh, the integral. And so uh, once uh, we've uh, done that, uh, once we've dealt with the limits, we can, in this case, we can replace uh, the uh, unit step function by its value in the range, which is just one. So we've got a really uh, simple uh, integral uh, to, uh, to, uh, to evaluate. Uh, and, uh, but we did use uh, T to set the limits on tau. Uh, so uh, this sets the limit on T. And uh, very clearly, uh, because of how we set things up, uh, the output has to be zero uh, for times uh, less than zero. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we clearly also uh, have uh, looking at tau values between uh, zero and t. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, what uh, what that means uh, then uh, is uh, we can uh, we can set uh, the uh, the value uh, to be uh, and uh, and by the way uh, in, in looking at my hand writing there uh, the uh, the the upper uh, limit uh, is is going uh, to uh, to be t uh, the it uh, it looks like a tau but it's intended to be a t. Uh, and uh, the uh, so so basically, uh, we uh, can ultimately then uh, write uh, that uh, this integrates uh, to uh, to t, uh, and uh, so y of t is equal to t, uh, and uh, we can take both pieces and write uh, y of t as the product of t uh, with the unit step function because that includes the piece that uh, y is equal to zero for t uh, less than zero. Turns out that uh, uh, where, where all uh, that's, uh, that's happened is uh, that uh, we, uh, we get something multiplied by the step function. This is actually an example that uh, works out being an integrator and we could build an amplifier with a capacitor in it uh, to, uh, to, re to realize this particular result. And what I'll say is the convolution integral is the best uh, uh, ma mathematical representation of the physical process that occurs uh, when uh, an input uh, is uh, is in a system. The system acts on it, and the, and our uh, LTI system produces an output. Uh, so uh, the convolution is is the integral is the best way of working out uh, what uh, that output is. Let's look at another example. So this time, uh, what I've done uh, is uh, the uh, uh, basically uh, uh, said uh, that inputs the step function, uh, the response uh, is uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, given, uh, uh, sorry, the impulse response is given by uh, that function. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, since the uh, convolution uh, integral is commutative, uh, we can always uh, swap uh, where the t and the t minus tau are. Uh, and so in this, in this case, uh, I did uh, that and, and, and put uh, the t minus tau in uh, the uh, in x. Uh, because uh, the because it looks it lo it just looked to me like like that would be uh, the easier integral. Uh, so uh, u of tau makes the integral zero for uh, for tau less than zero. So the lower limit is zero, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, basically uh, u of t minus tau, just like in the previous example, uh, makes the integral uh, integrand uh, zero uh, for. Uh, uh, tor uh, less than, uh, uh, sorry, greater than t. Uh, so uh, the upper limit is t, uh, which I did write in properly on this example. Uh, and uh, you can uh, see uh, that uh, we can just then uh, plug terms into the integral, uh, replace uh, the uh, unit step function with one in uh, the range, uh, integrate it, uh, and uh, and uh, basically uh, we again uh, can write uh, the uh, 
output uh, in terms of the unit step function. Uh, and I said, this is probably the work for the week. There may be more examples because that's uh, kind of where I thought I might end uh, the class on uh, Tuesday, uh, but didn't really get that far. Well, I, I might have, but I wanted to go over those things again. Uh, let's now look at another example. Uh, this time, uh, again, uh, the, uh, the uh, input uh, is, a, uh, uh, is a step function. Uh, this time, uh, you can see uh, that I've uh, written a decaying exponential as uh, the output. Uh, we can begin from the convolution integral to figure out what, uh, 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 what uh, the output is. Uh, and so we just have to convolve uh, the, uh, uh, the input with uh, that uh, uh, impulse uh, response, uh, which has the decaying exponential in it. Uh, and uh, this time, uh, uh, it would be a, a good idea to, to pictorially uh, look at uh, what uh, the, uh, the functions look like. So X of T uh, is the upper diagram, H of T is uh, the uh, lower diagram, because basically you, you just are applying a, de a decay factor uh, to uh, a, a unit step function. But uh, in uh, this case, what we actually need for our convolution integral is, uh, is h of t minus tau. Uh, tau is the variable where we've reversed the function and shifted it. Uh, and uh, I've uh, discussed uh, that uh, before. Uh, so uh, that's uh, what uh, h of uh, t uh, minus uh, tau looks like. And I, I've drawn two pictures. Uh, one for uh, when uh, time is negative and one uh, for, uh, for when uh, time is positive and uh, recognize uh, that uh, the discontinuity occurs uh, basically uh, when uh, the argument uh, is, uh, is zero in these terms, uh, just using uh, the unit step uh, function uh, defined about the origin uh, as the example. Uh, and uh, so, uh, we can use the diagrams uh, to evaluate the convolution interval. So for uh, times uh, that are negative, uh, the, uh, the impulse response uh, function and uh, the signal don't overlap. Uh, and, uh, but for uh, uh, when the time is positive, uh, they only overlap from uh, tau equals zero uh, to uh, the time tau is equal to t. Uh, and so we can conclude that for uh, negative times, uh, y of uh, t is equal to zero, and for positive times, we actually have to uh, calculate an integral. So we'll do that. Uh, we only need uh, to uh, consider uh, the values where the integrand is non-zero. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so uh, basically, we can put our, our limits. There are zero to t. Uh, we can put in uh, the step function is equal to one over that range. Uh, and so we have uh, an exponential uh, to evaluate that run uh, through uh, the integral. Uh, and uh, again, I get uh, a, an expression out that's valued for uh, times greater than zero. And just as before, uh, to avoid having to say it's uh, zero um, uh, for, uh, for negative times, I've, I've used the, the uh, usual convention uh, and I've written the result in uh, terms of a step function. So uh, that's one way of doing that problem. I could, however, decide uh, to uh, to uh, use the uh, version of the convolution integral uh, that we get uh, from uh, the uh, using commutativity, and so uh, what I'm uh, going uh, to do then is I'm going to I'm going to cal calculate the convolution of H uh, with X. Uh, and uh, so uh, this time the uh, t minus tau factor is going to be in X, uh, not in tor. Is it easier uh, to evaluate? Well, only in the sense uh, that we have to consider h of tau and x of t minus tau. Uh, and uh, since uh, the uh, x uh, is a step function, uh, we've got more experience uh, with it. So h of tau, uh, we can easily uh, do. Uh, and uh, the, uh, but when we, uh, uh, look at uh, the the input this time. It is the step function, uh, but uh, 
this time we're going to clearly have two sketches because there's going to be a sketch for uh, negative times uh, and a, uh, a sketch uh, for positive times. And I'm going to spend a little more time on this. Uh, so again, I want you uh, to gain uh, confidence in evaluating and drawing uh, step functions because once you understand uh, step functions, time shifting and reversing other functions becomes easy. Uh, and if you're ever confused, go back and think about a step function. So first, if we consider uh, the, uh, the step function uh, for uh, the negative times, uh, the, uh, I've started out with my definition uh, and uh, basically the discontinuity uh, occurs at, uh, at uh, t is equal to t zero. Uh, and uh, we have our, uh, our uh, uh, nice uh, unit uh, step function. Uh, so, uh, so now uh, what uh, I, I'm doing is uh, we already uh, know what happens if we uh, just do a time reversal, it reverses uh, the step function. And again, that's just a review of what we did before. So what we, uh, what we need uh, to do is uh, we need to understand our, uh, or extend our uh, understanding of uh, the unit step function when it's time reversed uh, to looking at the, be the uh, behavior of uh, u of t zero minus t. Uh, so uh, the discontinuity again will occur at a uh, t zero, but uh, it's, uh, it's got uh, to be uh, this time on uh, the other uh, side of the axis uh, when we're considering uh, the negative values. Uh, so, uh, so basically, uh, if uh, time is positive, uh, you, you can see uh, the discontinuity occurs at, at T0. When time is negative, the discontinuity occurs at minus T0. Uh, and so we need uh, to, uh, uh, to keep that in mind. Now, having uh, done that, uh, as I said, we resume normal programming and go back to the convolution integral that we were looking at. So we can just say that now that T is our fixed uh, value, so it's playing the role of T0, and Tor is the variable playing the role of T. So here's our graphs uh, with, uh, for, uh, for X of uh, T minus Tor for negative values of T and positive values of T. Uh, the graph of H and, uh, or the unit impulse uh, response I've just uh, drawn again because it was a few pages back. Uh, and uh, so uh, for negative values of Tor, there is no overlap uh, between uh, functions, so we don't have to worry about this piece. And uh, for uh, positive values, we only get an overlap between zero and T. Uh, so now knowing that we can insert the limits and we can put in the value of one uh, for the unit step function, uh, and this is the integral that we get to evaluate. I've integrated it. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we can uh, write the same result that we got uh, from, uh, from the standard uh, first uh, definition. Uh, so basically showing that whichever way we make this calculation, we get the answer. Read this example carefully uh, because uh, I've, uh, I've treated uh, unit step functions at least three times uh, at, at this point uh, in the weeks that we've been meeting. And uh, this is the most sophisticated version and where we finally get the big picture. Uh, the, the idea of, of uh, time reversed and shifted uh, functions is something that comes up all the time uh, in our study of convolution integrals. And that gets us to this. So what is exactly going on in the convolution integral? Well, if we write uh, the, uh, the standard starting definition uh, where it's the unit impulse uh, function uh, that has the T minus Tor in it, here's what happens. Uh, in order uh, to evaluate the integral, the impulse uh, uh, response is time reversed. In other words, uh, reflected about the origin uh, to yield H of minus Tor. And then it's shifted by T uh, to yield H of T uh, minus Tor. Uh, and uh, which is uh, which is uh, which is that, uh, and uh, so uh, 
h of t minus tor is a function of tor and it contains the parameter t. Now what we do is we, imp we, we uh, multiply uh, that um, uh, time reversed and uh, shifted uh, 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 impulse uh, response uh, by the input. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we integrate it uh, for all values, over all values of Tor uh, with T fixed at some value. We don't care what it is, just that it's fixed. So then we actually do uh, the integral and it produces uh, Y of T, which would be a single value, but uh, we talk about uh, uh, then uh, we, we repeat steps uh, one to three for all values of uh, T ranging from minus infinity uh, to infinity to produce the entire output. We don't actually have to have to do an infinite number of integrals here. Basically what we did in practice, you saw, we figured out where the integrand was non-zero uh, and just worked out uh, that piece. And then we pieced uh, together uh, the rest of, uh, of, of Y by putting that uh, or writing it in terms of the set function. Uh, the, the final thing uh, that I want uh, to do for the week uh, is now uh, uh, begin figuring out ways to actually calculate an impulse uh, uh, response because up to now, uh, the only impulse responses uh, you have had have been ones that I've given you. So uh, let's uh, look at, uh, to, to build up this idea, let's look at the step response of the, uh, of the system. Uh, because it turns out to be a way of determining the impulse response. So let's uh, formally uh, say uh, that if uh, we input a, a step function into our system, uh, then the output is the step response. And I'll just label that with S. We can use the convolution integral uh, to calculate what S is. Uh, and so uh, all uh, we uh, would have to do, and I, I use uh, the, uh, the second version of our convolution integral here, putting uh, T minus tor in, uh, in, 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 uh, the, uh, in, in the step function. Uh, so, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, I've evaluated that integral for you uh, before, uh, because, uh, and it was on page 14 of these notes. So, so I'm just writing the, uh, the answer. So you can get the step response by integrating uh, the impulse response. Uh, and now you know why I worked that example, uh, but it's not the most important point. If uh, we write uh, that uh, the step response uh, is given uh, by that integral, uh, we could differentiate it. And if we uh, differentiate it uh, with respect to time, uh, we can label uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, step response uh, uh, or the, the uh, derivative of the step response as S, S prime. But differentiating that, uh, that yields uh, H of T when we differentiate the integral. So this gives us uh, a, a, a useful uh, result. Uh, basically, one way uh, to get the impulse response uh, of a system is figure out what uh, the step response is and uh, differentiate it. Uh, and, and that really is a good place to start for the week uh, because uh, I will uh, work some examples of that, uh, but I will tell you that's not usually the way we work the problems, but it is uh, the first way uh, that we'll introduce. So. Uh, we've, uh, in this past week, uh, we've pulled lots of what we've done up to now uh, together. Uh, and I have, uh, as you know, uh, earlier posted uh, some homework problems. Uh, I did decide uh, to uh, uh, cut the homework problems in half. And so I've given you uh, the, the foundational ones uh, due over the next week. And, I'll get, uh, and you'll get the second half of the assignment over, uh, I'll give it to you next Thursday, uh, and, and I'll probably just give you a week uh, to uh, to do that. So, so basically, what what I've done is instead of giving you two work uh, weeks to work a long assignment, I've split it into two pieces, and you'll have a week on each piece, uh, and it will, uh, I think, work out better in practice. So. 
I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen. Uh, and uh, the, uh, as you know, uh, we aren't uh, meeting face to face today, uh, but this does uh, cover everything I would have done in, in class today. And uh, we are in pretty good shape, but from here on in, uh, uh, up to now, I've done most of the work. I've worked examples, uh, uh, which in past years I would have assigned as homework problems. Uh, but I think uh, you'll come to appreciate uh, that my doing all of those as work examples uh, will actually make your life for the rest of the uh, semester much simpler. So have a great day. Uh, and uh, I uh, will now stop the recording. <laughs>